G'day and welcome to another edition of The Rev Up, brought to you by Crowcast. This week we're previewing the big match, the very important clash, Cameron. Mm, indeed. Uh, with the Gold Coast, Gold Coast Suns. Uh, this, of course, is my troublesome son, Cameron. And uh, we'll be doing our best to get everyone fired up and ready for the big match this afternoon. First, before we get into that, mate, mm. what did you think about last week? Loved it. <laughs> loved it? Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Yeah, loved it. Why? Just really thoroughly enjoyed the game. <laughs> um, yeah, many a TV remote were thrown and obscenities were was, was said at times. The only good thing about that game was that it forced four changes. <laughs> the only good thing about that game was that it ended. That was all that was good about it. There's nothing good that came of that game. We didn't even deserve to get it as close as what we did. It's been be a bit of bit of pain this week as a result. Yeah. There's been a lot of scuttlebutt. There's been a few players come out in the media and talk about selection, which is pretty rude. Josh Jenkins could feel the heat. You could tell. He'd come out with that article. I yeah. read it the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bryce Gibbs came out on yeah. SEN and yep. was whinging about being phoned up with his selection. Well, I actually tend to agree with him, but anyway. I think well, that's... if he's not at the club. What do you mean? Well, he might have been at home. No, I mean him whinging because he had like 27 touches the week before. He wasn't... Yeah, but they went straight up in the... <laughs> yeah, but you can't tell me that he was worse than anyone else on the part. Uh, I would have probably dropped three or four before. I'd probably drop off the team before yeah. I would have dropped Bryce. But anyway, especially after last week. But that's all right. Never mind. We're uh, one and three, mm. staring down the barrel. Mm. And uh, Eddie's 300th, mm. Smithers 150th, all to play for. Let's have a look at the team, shall All we? All right, so lining up at full back line, we've got Alex Keith in the pocket, Tiles in full, full, uh, full back, sorry, Hardigan in the other back pocket. Oh, Hardigan should have been dropped. Do you want to just start that again? Oh, Hardigan would have been dropped. <laughs> should have been dropped. Jake Kelly at half back, Rory Laird at centre half back, taking the big monster apparently is Rory Laird. <laughs> um, Wayne Miller at the other half back flank, and then you D Mac on the wing. You got Matt Crouch in the guts, Brody Smith is lining up on the other wing. Riley Knight is at half forward. Tommy Lynch is lining up at centre half forward. Atkins is on the other flank. Then we've got um, Kem Atlas Yolman in the pocket. Touch lucky? Yeah, no, I thought he did enough. I thought he did enough. Um, Walker at full forward and Betts in the other pocket. Riley O'Brien is definitely lucky to still be playing. And then you've got uh, Sloan as Ruck Rover, Brad Crouch as the Rover. Interchange, Huey Greenwood, my boy, he's back. <laughs> he's back. He's back. Um, Elliot Himmelberg, Bryce Gibbs is also back. And then Murph, probably a touch lucky to still be playing. Uh, and then obviously we've got the emergencies. Stengel was probably the most notable in there that's um, being called up into the emergency slot. Our boy Andy Ockman isn't in there. He'd be no. filthy. No. He'd be filthy. Well, what's the, what's the old bloke got to do? Yeah, he just wants to play emergency. <laughs> that's all he wants to do. <laughs> Um, and then obviously, so the people out, we've got Josh Jenkins has been omitted because he's shit. Um, <laughs> Chase Jones is obviously out with a concussion and paholke has been omitted. Bit rough getting one game and then getting omitted, but that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I didn't think they actually gave Paholke a task no, last week. No, it was week. just like, oh yeah, you've been playing well, so come and play and then didn't actually really give him a role. No, he's, he's a goal-kicking midfielder. Yeah. And they played him sort of roaming around half-forward-ish. Yeah. And look, you know, there's probably an argument to say that maybe he's not quite up to it. But I also don't think we played him in position at all. No. Um, and, yeah, he was sort of pushed to the outside and playing in a game where no one scored. You know, he's not going to be a goal-kicking midfielder. That's right. None of, none of our other midfielders really right. kick goals either. Anyway, moving on to your team, mate. All right. So for the Suns, we have from the back line, we have Jared Harbrow, Sam Collins and Charlie Ballard. Across half back, we have Jesse Joyce, Jack Homsch, uh, Piers Hanley. Across the middle, we have Jordan Murdoch, Braden Fiorini, and George Holland Smith, the two ex Geelong cats mm. there across the middle. Yeah. Uh, half forward, Alex Sexton, two metre Peter, and Nick Holman, South Aussie boy. Full forward line, we have Darcy McPherson, Chris Burgess, and Jack Martin. Uh, in the ruck, we have Jared Witts with Took Miller and David Swallow. In a change, Ben Ainsworth, Jack Bowes, Will Brody, and Jack Lacocious stays in, although he's been struggling a bit. Come home, Jack. <laughs> well, it's an audition. Yeah, yeah. come home, Jack. Uh, emergencies for them, Sam Day, Jacob Heron, Brad Shear, and Aaron Young. So the Yins are George Holland Smith and Will Brody making way for them are two injured players, Will Powell and Anthony Miles. Big and of out course, for them, Anthony Miles. Yeah, played well last week. Mm. And Pierce Hanley for them plays as 150. So three milestones. Who cares about Pierce Hanley? <laughs> Who cares? 
Well, I don't. And I just thought I'd mention it. No one, no one listening to this is a Gold Coast supporter, mate. No one cares about him. It's all you about, it's all about gonna, bets. I'm going to share it on the Gold Coast <laughs> fan page. So there's nine oh, people. I'm sure heaps of people will watch there's it. There's nine people that's yeah. going to listen to it. I'm sure heaps of them will watch it too. <laughs> all right, mate. So look, who's your, like, you could just about say the whole team, but who's your, <coughs> who's your key players this week? Yeah. For um, the Crows. My first one, and I've already sort of had a bit of a commotion about him already, is Hugh Greenwood. I think that we've been missing. Oh. Yeah, look, mate, he's, he's the boy. He's the man. But I think we've really missed his inside grunt. We've missed his um, his ability to win a 50-50 ball. I think that he gives us good versatility in the midfield and then going forward. It seems to me like we're probably going to get a bit of a swap between him and Ellis Yeoman and maybe Rory Sloan through the midfield and through the forward line. Um he, if he plays well today, it'll do very, very good. Like, it'll be very good for Adelaide and it'll go a long way to us winning. Uh, the next one that I was going to pick out was Alex Keith. I think he's been in some pretty good form. Yep. Um, I think that even though he's not quite... Coaches votes last week. Yeah, not quite adaptable to um, Duday's role. I also think that he's done well and he's probably been one of our best, if not our best, yep. especially in the back line. Um, Agreed. So, yeah, if he, if he continues on, it'll go a long way, especially because we're so top over yet back there and we've got a couple of absolute window lickers back there at the moment <laughs> as well. So if it, we really need him to play well. So he's my next one. And then who did I pick as the other one? I've forgotten now. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, and then, of course, 300 Gamer, Eddie Betts, mate. Just got to get him to stand up, kick five, six, I don't care, ten, whatever. Is he playing too high at the moment? Uh, he doesn't seem to be around the goals enough. He's playing yeah. up on the wing. and I think that's probably just trying to get him involved in the game. We haven't got it down there enough. and They're probably just trying to get him a bit involved, which is what they tend to do if he's struggling or if the team's struggling. Just trying to clear out. Yeah, play Pagan's clear Paddock. Clear out. Play Pagan's Paddock. Imagine that. Just Eddie in the square by himself. <laughs> everyone outside the 50. That'd be great. One, out, one out with, I don't know, uh, Harbrow or someone. Yeah, that's exactly right. But look, Eddie, I think, is in... Um, in good form. I don't think he's in amazing form, but I think he's in reasonable form. Yeah, he's almost. Yeah. It was he's an almost it, game yeah. last week. And look, ball barely went down there, so you've got to you know, take that into consideration when you assess his game last week. But I think that this week, you know, 300 game player, he's a big game player, playing at home, just going to get it done. Yep. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Look, I reckon for the Suns, uh, we already mentioned Harbrow. I don't reckon he'll get the job on bets. I reckon that might go to Hanley. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Harbrow is their version of Rory Laird for 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 the Suns. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's pretty dynamic. He's a playmaker. Uh, his pressure levels have increased since he came over from the Bulldogs, mm-hmm. playing good solid footy. Well, um, he's their old head back there as well, really. Well, he is, yeah. um, and uh, he looks to be playing with a bit of a new lease of life. So yep. he played pretty well against uh, the Blues last week. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's the, he's their main playmaker off off that half back line. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Sexton. Up forward, Alex. Who? But <laughs> it's half their squad, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, but he actually looked really lively last week against the Blues. He he, he floats around the half forward line. Um, he knows where the goals are. He doesn't mind having a dip at the goals. Uh, he's a bit raw, so sometimes he probably is decision making. Yep. Decision making isn't right. Yep. But if he gets off the chain, he can hurt us on the scoreboard. So yeah. he's one probably to sit on. Um, and then, obviously, I think, and we'll, we'll talk about this when we talk about the, the matchups a bit more, but Jared Witts for them, mm. I think, is a real key. Uh, he's a very good ruckman. He's coming up against a rookie. Uh, if he can give them first use, uh, that'll, that's going to make life very difficult for us yep. with the current configuration of 666. And let's be honest, against Rob, he probably will. So. Well... All right, I mean, let's talk about Rob for a minute. I actually thought he did a little better last week. Oh, I'd agree with that, but I still don't think that we would have lost anything by having someone else doing that role. Paul Hunter, I think even Jenkins would have given us similar output. Yeah. Um, even if you know he's in raw form, I wonder whether they might even throw Himmelberg in there. Um, but well, anyway. I think the Berg will probably chop out. And, but, um, we'll we'll but, get to that anyway. Yeah. So, look... My my biggest worry, uh, with regards to how how we look on paper, is that we just look really top heavy down back. Yeah. Oh, look, we we always do. Speak speak up, we always do because especially with Hardigan, Talia, and Keith, it's not exactly mobile tools either. You got Talia who is you know 
locked down and you know gets involved going the other way a bit, but he's not known for his speed and agility. No. You've got Hardigan as well, who is quick and is agile, but is a liability at the best of times. You've got Jake Kelly, who is similar in the fact that he's a liability, but doesn't have any of the physical attributes that Hardigan has. So he's even you know further behind the eight ball yeah. there. Um, and then you've got Miller and Led. So 100% agree with you. And especially when you look at their forward line, how that's going to match up, you wonder how we are actually going to play. Well, it's really only one key post. Mm, you got Peter so, Wright. That's yeah, it. Peter Wright. I mean, the rest of them are all mid-size or smalls. Mm. Um, and they and watching them last week against the Blues, relatively quick. Yep. Um, and they apply a lot of pressure, a lot of forward fifty pressure. So they rely on a lot of repeat 50, inside fifties. Yep. Territory game. Yep. Yep. And I don't think we've actually got the lineup to deal with that. No. Uh, it's going to require a bit of work from our wingmen. Yep. to get back uh, and clog space. Yep. But that's that's my biggest concern. If they get enough of the ball, then we're mismatched down back. Oh, yeah. And I'm really surprised we didn't make a couple of changes out of that back line because oh. whilst you'd probably think that our, our biggest issue has been our engine room this year, the simple fact remains there's a couple of blokes sadly out of form. Hardigan, I'm a big fan of Hardigan, but he is sadly out of form at the moment. Oh, I, and me too. I used to be a massive advocate because I thought he used to get a bad rap, but he's been atrocious this year. He just... The thing with Kyle is he needs a job. Mm. You know, give him a bloke, stop yeah. him from getting the ball. Well, he used Kyle's to be our buddy stopper. But, but now, the, and with this sort of matchup, you know, what's Kyle going to do? Is he going to is he going to line up on a on a mid size? I mean, he can because of his his speed and agility, yeah. isn't it? But his decision making coming out of defence is just. It's woeful. Well, it's not just that, but his disposal as well. Yeah. Like, I saw him kick one off his ankle <laughs> last week, and it's like, you're an AFL footballer. You shouldn't be doing yeah. that. And I get that, you know, again, he's out of form, rah, 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 but you're an AFL footballer. It is literally your job to know how to kick a ball, yeah. and he does that. It's surprising how many blokes in the AFL don't know how to kick. Goodness gracious. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we need big games from Laird and Miller. Mm. Rory, I mean, he got a few touches last week, but he didn't really have an influence on the yeah, game. Yeah, he's not been as impactful think. this year so far, and I think teams have cottoned on to the fact that he's our man down there um, and they've blanketed him a bit. But, you know, he should have enough help back there that, you know, the other two, like Miller and Smith, should start cleaning up and it should drag the attention away from him so that, you know, it frees him up a little bit. When was the last time you saw a midfielder at the last line of defence on transition? In our team? Yeah. Oh, never. I think I've seen Sloan down there a couple of times. I've even seen Walker down there a couple of times, but you don't see any of the Crouch boys down there. No. Providing runs. So mm. one, we rely on those back three tools mm. to to get the ball out in a in a quick manner and in an aggressive manner. Yeah. They're the wrong people to be doing it. Yeah, I know. Like, you... you they're the blokes that you get the handball give off and then the next bloke's creative, like a Brodie Smith or a, well, that, or a Wayne Miller. And that's why the back line, the way it's set up from selection is worrying because you've only got two blokes in there that you'd trust to kick the ball out. Yeah, that's right. And that's Miller and Laird. That's right. Well, and I wouldn't even trust Laird because... Yeah. I mean, and, actually, that's a bit of harsh on Keith, to be honest, because his disposal's actually been really good and he's the only one that actually seems to be wanting to take a risk. And he's the only one that I've actually seen do that quick 45 kick into yeah. the corridor or whatever. So, yeah. you know, he, he... But again, you know... He's but it's a, not his bloody job. No, exactly. You know? That's sort of what we're getting at. Uh, <clears throat> look, in terms of the midfield, I, my um, impression of Gold Coast is that they're just a bunch of hard workers. Mm. Um, but that might be enough against us. Yeah, well. Because the very knock on us at the moment is our lack of ability to work both ways. Yep. Yeah. You know, we look particularly slow on defensive transition against North North Melbourne last week. Yep. We allowed them time and space. We didn't spread hard hard enough when we had the ball. Yep. So they were able to compress the ground and lock it in and get turnovers and all the rest of it. And I, I just feel like we're lazy at the moment in the midfield. And mm. I, I like the, the inclusion of Greenwood and Gibbs, but it doesn't actually make us any quicker. I would have loved to have seen Gallucci in that. Yeah, and Stengel. And Stengel. Yeah, 100%. No, I agree with you. Because, again, like as much as the selection's been good, I also think it's a bit of a cop-out dropping Jenkins. No, yeah, I deserved it. I, I agree. I, I'm not saying that he didn't deserve it, but I also think it's a bit of a cop-out because he's the easy target. Where's the dropping of Atkins? Where's the dropping of you know someone else? Like Lynch, for example, hasn't been set in the world on fire. Well, Matt Crouch. 
Matt Crouch, Matt, Matt Crouch was them. absent yeah. and couldn't and chase cooked. down yeah, Todd cooked. Goldstein last yeah. week. And cooked 100%. Where's the dropping of Jake Kelly? Like, you know, there's a few in there that I thought were worse or on the same level as Jenkins and have gotten away with it. Yeah. And look, you've only got so many players in your list, I get that. But I still think there was an opportunity for a few more heads to roll. And if we were really keen to make some, a statement, I don't think we've quite done it. Well, if, to, my, to my way of thinking, in terms of the midfield, if, if Gooch is fit, mm, if he's he fit playing? enough to be in the emergencies, yep. um, why, isn't he in the, why isn't he in the 22? I mean, we need a bit of pace. Yep. I love the Gooch. I love the way he straight lines the ball. Yeah, me too. Uh, I know his disposal in the SNFL has been a bit off, but... At AFL level, he's been fine. Yeah, he he has put in some pinpoint passes, and I, I just like his attitude and his and the way he goes about it, and he offers a bit of pace. Yeah, you know, even even uh, on our wings, so Brody Smith is not slow, but he's not lightning. Oh, uh, I don't know. So when Smith gets going, he's pretty hard to catch. David McKay is not slow, but he's light, and he just gets ragdolled yeah. all the time. I mean, look, and, then that's actually probably. Been okay, I think. Oh yeah, um, but he's not best twenty-two. No, well, well if he you probably could... is right now because we've got twelve blokes that aren't. Well, in it. <laughs> I'd have I'd have I'd have Gooch on a wing ahead of D Mac any day of the week. Mm. Like to any honest, day of the week. To be honest, it's that half forward flank for mine, um, where you've got Atkins. I think that that you know that's bread and butter for Luch, and then you can push David McKay back to a half back flank, mm-hmm. and then you can push David McKay back to a half back flank, um, and then you know it frees up that half forward flank. For Luch to slip in, and then he can play on the wing as well. Yeah, well, so uh, it's really important, I think, in terms of our midfield that we are prepared to work because Gold Coast, as I said, they're a bunch of workmen. There's not a huge amount of class in there, but Took Miller and David Swallow is a pretty good engine room. Yep, um, and they rotate other players through there. And what I've what I saw of them against Carlton last week, they harass and they applied frontal pressure and. They didn't allow Carlton easy transition through the forward line and they were prepared to run both ways. So mm. if we get into this slow, chippy, chippy transition that we seem to be wanting to play, yep. then the Gold Coast are going to be able to make good position. They're going to be able to get their defence set. They're going to be able to get blokes behind the ball. Stuart Jew showed that he likes playing a bloke behind the ball. He mm. played a bloke behind the ball pretty much the whole game against um, Carlton last week. Yep. So there's a few blokes that are going to... Matt Crouch has really got a lift. If he's fit... I was going to say, do you think he's fit? Because he doesn't look like he's fit. Well, if he's if he's in the team, he's fit. Yeah, we've got enough know. blokes. Hang on, we've got a bit of history of playing blokes that aren't fit. So. Yeah, I know, but you'd think we'd learn from that. Yeah, well, like, we obviously haven't. Well, look, the sim- we have to assume he's fit. Mm. And if he's fit, then he's not offering us anything. Like he, He's basically a, a coal-faced player and that's it. And the trouble is that he's getting run off all the time mm. um, and offering us nothing defensively or, or going the other way. Like I don't see him get involved much in transition. Which is weird because when he was at his best, he was in the cold face, but he was also expanding his game and you know getting yeah. on the outside a lot and hitting yeah. up targets and whatever and tackling and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Whereas I haven't seen that from him this year. No. He looks like... I saw him try to chase a few times. The intent is there, but it's like he physically cannot... And that's why I wonder whether he's Grind. fit. Yeah. That's um, why I wonder whether he's fit. Yeah. And look, to be honest with you, Brad's a bit like that as well. I mean, Brad's been getting decent numbers um, and uh, not been our worst by any stretch. But he's again... He's been one of our best, to be honest. Huh? He's been one of our best, to be honest. Well, he has in terms of output. But when you really sit down and watch how the game's being played, mm. he is slack defensively. And it's it's on those defensive actions that we're getting that we're getting killed mm. so he is getting the ball and he is working hard around the coal face and all the rest of it but defensively um there's been a few times where i don't know whether it's a i don't know whether it's a concentration thing or um or or just a form thing but i think he needs to he needs to elevate to that next level Yep. He needs to get to a Patrick Cripps uh, level. Well, you've got to remember, he hasn't played as many games as Patrick Cripps yet either. And no, I know he's been around yeah. for a long time, but he's also not actually had a whole heap of game yeah. experience. And not in one big clump. Like It's very hard to learn your craft when you're constantly in and out. And I think that 
you got to be a bit careful not to be too hard on him because the bloke hasn't played in 12 months. And you're right. He's yeah. dead set right. Um, and he certainly looks freer in his movement. Yep. He looks like uh, he's running on top of the ground. So yep. that's great. Yep. And I'm happy for Brad to work through this season and, and you know, build. Mm. Uh, that's what I've noticed at the moment, that he's um, been guilty of ball watching at times and just been a little bit uh, probably... I, I'd say it's concentration mm. more than anything else. Yeah, it's a quick game. People uh, haven't talked much about Rory Sloan. Mm. He only had 16 touches last week. Eight kicks and eight handles. How many tackles did he have, though? Eight or seven or something. Exactly. So Sloan doesn't need a lot of touches to have a big impact. And yes, sometimes you wish he got more touches, but he's never been a big possession getter. No, but more than eight kicks. You think about last week, how last week was played. Mm. We kicked the ball. Right, we yeah. kicked and we kicked and we kicked and we kicked and we freaking kicked and kicked and then when we'd finished kicking, we kicked. Mm. Sloane only got eight for the game. Nah, back off. No, I can't back yeah. off because yeah. it's it's well down on his numbers and I didn't notice a hard tag on him from North Melbourne. He's been our best player so far this year. I don't think so. Uh, oh, Dad, please. No, I don't think so. Well, then you're wrong. I don't think been. so. He I think Alex been. Keith has been our best player. Oh, well, I'll cop that. But, okay, top five players so far, Sloan has definitely been. He might have had a, a low output in terms of disposals, but the thing about Sloan is his value is that if he is having a bit of a down game in disposals, he'll do the other things, like he pressure will do the other and things. tackles. I agree with that. So and I that's something that the crash boys don't, don't do. do. Correct. They so, do go missing completely. So, you know, yeah, he might have been out down on output, blah, 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 but shut up, he had seven tackles, so leave him alone. All right. Well, I'll counter that. I'll counter that with this point, right? All right. He's our number one midfielder. Is he? Yes. Okay. At the moment, because mm. Brad's still learning how to play, according to you, right? So... Well, I'm just asking the question, <laughs> friend. So if uh, friend, so <laughs> <laughs> so if, if Sloane is our number one midfielder, mm. don't we need him to be getting twenty five, thirty touches? Yeah, but that's easy to say. But you've got to actually look at how the bloke plays. We're paying him seven hundred grand a year. Yeah, but how does he actually play? What he type works. of player is he? He's a worker. Yeah, he's a runner. In and under, he's a pressure act player, he's a tackler, and sometimes he gets on the end and kicks us a goal. He's good in the air, but you, he's never going to give you those 35-plus disposal games. No, but he's he never is, been that way. But he's, he's more than a 16-touch player. I agree with that, but he's had more than 16 touches every game apart from last week. He's been on a downward trend. To be honest, he has stats. Stats wise, he has, and uh, this shows it. <laughs> um, all, all I'm saying is that we need more out of our premier midfielders. Where Rory Sloan, Brad Crouch, um, you know Brody Smith, we need more in. Transition. Smith isn't a midfielder. Well, he's playing on the wing. Yeah, but did we actually see him in the midfield on the weekend? No, Smith. I think has been lost because I don't know whether I don't think they know where to what to do with Miller and Smith and Led in the same team. And I, Kelly. Yeah, I actually don't think they know what to do with them. No. Well and, and then we'll, also, talk, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Yeah, but yeah, okay. um the other I mean we we're talking about the midfield, but Miller is another one I think that needs to run through the midfield. I think he needs to start. I'm actually gonna well, go, I, go I, out on a whim and say yeah. I think he needs to start in the midfield because I don't look, think that's silly. I think we look better when he's in the midfield because it balances us out. Gibbs across half back, yep. Miller in the middle gives oh. a bit of bit of even, bit of speed. Even Gibbs in the midfield as well. Like he needs to play that. That's his spot. I get what you're saying about half back, but he's a midfielder. Play him in the midfield. He gets he's uh, a victim of his own versatility at times, Bryce. And I think that he like when he played half back at Carlton, he was shit. Well, he wasn't shit, but he didn't have anywhere near the same impact. Play him in the midfield. He's a midfielder. All right, that's all well and good, but he's been looking bloody slow. Yeah, and I get that. But if then he's not good enough to play in our midfield, then he doesn't play. Don't play him. So in. why is he in? He's good enough to play in our midfield, but he's slow. He's not slow, slow. Oh, he's, he's been playing slow. We just that's to... why he's been kicking around yeah, corners this is and why kicking we need up to make end. sure that the balance is right. And that's why I'm saying about Lair. That's what I'm uh, not Laird, Sorry, Miller. And that's what I'm saying about Smith. We need blokes to run through there when we've got the slower ones in. So, there. do you think our balance is right? No, I've said that just then. So, yeah. who, what would you do? I just said what I'd do. Miller I'd, in. I'd have so in our midfield. I'd have Sloan or one of the Crouch boys in there with Miller or Smith. 
okay. all times. And then if we're going to rotate out and then you've got Greenwood and Yolman in there, then you're going to have, you know, Laird or Smith. Or you can't Miller. have Greenwood and Yolman in there at the same time. What's the difference between him and him, Brad at the same time? Because then you've got your two grunt workers and then you've got your outside runner. Yeah, so I, I just think we're a speeds are short and I think it's a mistake that we haven't got Gallucci in that mix. Yeah, and I agree. 100%. Yeah. Uh, up forward, um, it's it's a bit different without JJ there. I actually like it. Um, not because JJ isn't there. It's more about the way that we look. Because when you look at that on paper, we don't actually have a big tool. And it could be a bit of a downfall, but I think that our weakness has always been that we look too big in our forward line at times. Mm-hmm. And that you know, having Walker at full forward might do him some good. And hopefully it frees Lynch's space up a little bit as well because Walker's not going to be running around up there. I worry for who's going to be distributing the ball to us, though, without Walker at centre-half forward because he's probably been our best distributor. Well, that's Tommy Lynch's role, isn't it? Well, it's supposed to be, but he's not been very good at it so far this year. Yeah. Um, Um, But Atkins on a half-forward flank, I like on paper, but he hasn't given me anything. So I'm I'm a bit, bit upset about that. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with Himmelberg down there as well. Yeah, uh, Elliot had a really good SANFL game, particularly the, center, uh, the second half last week. Mm. Just presented and worked and didn't hit the scoreboard, but it just kept leading up mm. and leading up and, and distributing and probably had two or three score assists and yep. in that third quarter in the SNFL and really earned his spot. Yep. And I think it's time. Uh, the guy's got class, he's got talent. Uh, he offers us a point of difference, which I think we've been lacking. Or we can take a grab. Forward, could take a mark, can thank take a grab. God. Yeah. But what it means is that it makes... Because like, the big knock for me on Jenkins, is because of the way he's been playing, mm. is that he's, uh, Jenkins allowed opposition defences to sag off him because he yeah. wasn't a threat, because yeah. he wasn't running to threatening positions. He yeah. was sagging off the back. Yeah. So the bloke that's playing on him has got 10 metres on him and then Tex leads and the bloke can then double team. Yeah. And Meanwhile, is... Josh is going, kick it over the back because yeah. he's too lazy. Well, that's just what he's used to as well. Um, I'm also excited at the prospect of Yolman in there because I'm feeling like that they're probably going to throw Huey down there at some point as well. Yeah. And I love it when we play Huey forward. Yeah. He can take a grab as well. He plays a lot taller than what he really is, um, but he's also mobile enough to get around the, um, you know, the, the forward 50 and you know, stop it on the way out as well. Good goal sense. So, yeah, really keen to see how that's going to go. I just hope that we don't look too small in the fact that we've only got Himmelberg that can take a grab. I'm a bit disappointed they didn't uh, think about Stengel. Yeah, I am too as well. Um, Imagine Stengel and Betts in the same forward line again. It'd be like having Charlie Cameron back. Well, again, I get back to this accountability issue. And, you know, I think that uh, offensively, I don't think Murphy and Riley Knight have been making defenders accountable enough it's weird, because they haven't it? been hitting the scoreboard or attacking. It's weird about Murphy because when he, when he came onto the scene, he was kicking a goal a game. Yeah. It's sort of faded out of his game a little bit of late, and I wonder what's going on there because you don't see him at, in like around the goals much. You see him very, very high. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that's game plan or if that's just the way the game's unfolding. But he was better when he was playing a sort of a bets chop out role yep. and playing a lot closer to goal. He's got good goal sense and he's got reasonable skills and he's hard to tackle. Why not just get him closer to the goal? Well, and Pahoki's another one. If you're not going to play Miles in his uh, in his role of a hard midfielder, mm. the next best for Miles is to play him as a marking small forward. Yeah, because he can play tall. Yeah, but he also knows where the goals are. Yeah, exactly. Can so, he go? But anyway, I mean, he's out. Um, and are we going to talk about the elephant in the room as well? No, Fogarty. Yeah, oh, I know what's going on. Did, has he, you know, done something horrible to Pike? I don't know. I don't know. Well, all right. So where would you put the fog? Well, you'd think that he comes in for any one of Yolman or even Himmelberg or T Lynch. Uh, yeah, or Lynch, hundred um, percent. Or down back, you've got Hardigan. Jake Kelly, that he he could play in any of those positions. There's a four or five players that you'd go, yeah, he could play there, and you just get him in the team. I mean, he's a man child. I, I he know. brings physicality. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he's got good skills. Yeah, he's raw, but get him in. The more exposure, the better. And and I know that he's not 
a defender and we mm-hmm. seem to be playing him down back for a reason in the SANFL. But even though he's not a defender. But if you're no. gonna do that, if you're gonna play him in defence in the SANFL, surely he's a better prospect than uh, Jake Kelly. And Hardigan at the moment. Play play him in the play yeah. him in the in the ones. Especially when again we're coming up against a forward line that don't have three tools. Exactly. So why do we need three defending tools? Well, he's a, he's a perfect matchup for a Nick Holman or a Darcy McPherson. Because yeah, he's that mid and he's big and he's not slow. Exactly. Brings good pressure, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, I, I agree with you. I think you just play him. Mm. I mean, we just play d And we seem to be <laughs> able to... We, we seem to be able... Well, we do. We shuffle our line I have to eat my words on d though, because I thought he was going to be absolute trash when he came in and he's been serviceable. I still think there's others he can bring in over the top, but he's also probably one of our better players at the moment. Really. Oh, I wouldn't say he's a better player. Well, there's a lot more players I'd drop before him. Put no. That way. I would Who? 100%. Oh, okay. Off the top of my head, Kelly, Hardigan. I'd drop Atkins over yeah, him. Yeah, but not like for like. I mean, you can't say Hardigan. He's not a bloody... No, but what I'm saying is... There'd D-Mac's be, not a... There'd be heaps, heaps of players that I would drop before D-Mac, 100%. And Jake Kelly plays at a half-back flank. I'd drop him way before I'd drop D-Mac at the moment. Oh, uh, no, I agree with you on that one. Same, I, same with Atkins. Atkins is playing in that sort of a role. He can play on the wing or at half forward. I'd drop Atkins 100% straight away. Yeah. Let, let me ask you about yeah. Atkins because my comment last week to Macker on the, on the Sunday wrap mm. was that in the first half against North last week, he was getting a bit of the ball, mm-hmm. um, turning it, it over a little bit. But, goal. Yep. Yeah. but in the second half when the wick got turned up, it's not that Rory stops running, but he just doesn't run to the right spots. He runs to unrealistic locations. Well, and again, when he's not providing anything offensively, he hurts us because we already know that he's not great defensively and it makes his inability to affect the game defensively look even worse when he's not doing it yeah, offensively. Yeah, but the thing of it is, it's about pressure for Rory because mm. as soon as it gets tight and tough, mm. Rory doesn't want to put himself in the line between the where the play is and the goals. Mm. So he'll be sagging off the side, going, kick it to me, but it's not the right option. Yeah. So he never gets the ball because he's not willing to actually get himself in amongst it. Yeah. He still wants to sit out on the side. And that's the big thing that I've noticed with Rory is that when he's when we've when the when the game is on our terms and we're actually He's in the thick of it. He's yeah. in the thick of it because he can get on the end of stuff. Yeah. But when he's actually got to put himself into position and and uh, offer himself, yeah, then he just he doesn't run run to the right position. Yeah, well, he's not good defensively. Is what we just said. He's, yeah. So and his tackling is well non-existent. It's, it's yeah, not worth talking about. It's not even like he doesn't even chase properly. He doesn't even look like he wants to tackle someone no. when he's chasing. No. Yeah. Well, and you know, so let's talk about the forward line a little bit more because yeah. Riley Knight, you mentioned earlier, I reckon it's. Riley Knight is playing for his career at the moment because he does not get enough. What he yeah. does, I love the two or three things mm. that Riley Knight does every every week. Yeah, the hard tackle, the smother, the the goal, the whatever. I love those things, but we need about three times as much from Riley as what we're getting at the moment. Yeah, I don't know if I'd, I, I get what you're saying, but I don't know if I tend to agree. Like I, I get what you mean. You need a bit more output from him. But he's in the team for pressure acts. Someone who can put a tag on if we need to. Yep. And to kick a goal here or there or to do, you know, like you yep. said, those three or four things a game. Yep. If he's doing that, I think he holds his spot. Yeah, but I don't think he's doing that enough at the oh, moment. I, no, Defensively, again. I don't think he's been great. Cam, let me give you a stat because you may not be aware, mm. but we did not lay one tackle inside 50 until the 13-minute mark of the third quarter last week. Yeah, well, that's what happens when it doesn't go down there. It was in there 21 times. 21 times, opposed to what's the normal average? It for... doesn't matter. Yes, it, it the does. ball was in yes, there 21 does. times, Yeah, and no one in those 21 Dad, times laid a tackle. Out of those 21 times, we scored like 15 no, we didn't. Yes, we did. No, it was we, either we point, actually did A point or a goal. We actually did We had about 15 scoring shots. Cameron, we actually did How many scoring shots did we have? It was about nine. No, we had more than that. No, it wasn't at that point in the game. Oh, well, even then, that's 11 times that they're unaccounted for. What I'm saying to you is that Riley and I isn't working hard enough defensively. And I disagree. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, the stats will show. <laughs> no, because I disagree with your, your, your analogy with the stats because that is 
pathetic in terms of forward entries. We scored. Oh yeah, more, absolutely. And more than half those times. No, we actually didn't because we had eighteen disposals per scoring goals shot. goals and points. Yeah, yeah, per scoring shot. Yeah, eighteen disposals per scoring shot. We were wasteful. Yeah, but going forward. No, but what I'm saying is, if it's in the forward line and we score, he's not going to tackle. Yeah, no, but we it? weren't scoring at the at the rate you think we were. Why not? Because that's how many forward entries we had, and that's how many scoring shots we had. That's a direct correlation. You're not giving me numbers, man. Well, it's because I don't have them off the top of my head. I'm not a statistician. <laughs> ah, I remember during right. the game. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, going to make a lot. Lower... <laughs> It's lucky uh, there's a can, not bottles. Yeah, you get a glass mm. leak. Um, and probably the, the last question is uh, whether Riley O'Brien can... It's not a question because it's not going to happen. You don't think? No. he's like I love, his, I love his mode in the fact that he tries his guts out. I get that. But he's not up to the standard. Calling it? Mm. I'm calling it. So, sources had surgery. Mm-hmm. Probably six weeks. Mm-hmm. Would you give those six weeks to O'Brien? No. Or would you call in Hunter? Or would you uh, get Jenkins to do it? What would you do? I wouldn't play... Um, ring, ring out Trent Orman Allen? <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't play O'Brien. I would do a bit of a Richmond and just throw a part-timer in there. Hugh and- Greenwood. Well, not necessarily Greenwood, but someone who doesn't normally play. Like even Jenkins, I'm happy with that because his attributes would allow him to play as another midfielder. I would scrap the Ruckman for the next six weeks because he is not one and he actually clogs us up if he's not going to provide a proper Ruckman's game. So in the past, like Richmond in the past have used Grimes a fair bit. Nah, Grig. Uh, Grig, sorry, in that role. Um, But I don't think you can do that this year because of the 666. I think you need to at least nullify the contest. I don't think you can give away the ruck contest it in, at the centre. It doesn't necessarily have to mean you give it away, but Riley O'Brien pretty much gives it away now. Yeah, but and what I'm saying is if you get someone like a Jenkins or whoever who is more mobile and nullify the contest, you're going to get the same output as what we get out of O'Brien, if not probably better, and you're going to have someone who is better around the ground. So I don't mind JJ in the ruck. Yep. Um, Even Himmelberg. Play him in the right. Yeah, I think that's throwing the. I get the that you know you're getting it land of the wall sort of thing. Well, and I also think that you're also getting away from his strength and playing him yeah. forward. But what I'm getting at is I just don't think that O'Brien is up to it, and I think we're better off not having him in the team, having another quicker player like you've gone on and put someone else that's already playing in another key post in the right. Yeah. So uh, maybe a uh, Kyle Hardingham. Why not? He's playing like shit down back. <laughs> like, and you never know that might all of a sudden just click something in Kyle's head. I don't think so. Well, he's got the attributes to play in it. He might not have the tank. But... I, I don't mind. I don't mind that. I don't mind JJ in Even the right. I mean, I know he's important down back. But, you play Keith in the right. But what it means is that you're basically saying, and I, I'm not saying I disagree with you. Mm. You're basically saying our, our the the kid that we've had on our list for four years or however long it's been is not up to it. Correct. And the bloke behind him, who we delisted and rookie listed. Paul Hunter is not up to it. Well, isn't the knock on Paul Hunter he's not tall enough? Well, he's two metres. Yeah, but isn't the knock on Paul Hunter that he's not tall enough? I don't know what the knock on Paul Hunter That's is. That's what I keep hearing, is he's not tall enough. Well, I think he's a far more natural footballer than Riley O'Brien. Get him in. I haven't. I can't comment because I don't know enough about him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if like I think that if he's had a good rap in the twos and that, like you're saying, is a far better, more natural footballer, well, then yeah, get him in because I don't think O'Brien is the one at the moment. All right, so at the moment, uh, Riley O'Brien comes up this week against Jared Witts. Who is no slouch whatsoever. Last week, he was up against Goldstein, who schooled him. Oh, and got, school he him. did, he got votes. Yeah. He got 17 posies, Goldstein, and, and had tons of influence in the game. Yeah. He got coaches' votes. Yeah. Okay, and the cool. and his first week, he came up against... Um, who did we play? I can't remember. Who week three it was uh, I'm Geelong. To block it all out. Geelong, who's yeah, the right one Stanley. For Stan, Reece Stanley, who hurt him a little bit as well. Oh, no. Stanley probably gave him more of a bath than Goldstein. Yeah, probably. So, the, and and all those three Ruckman are good Ruckman, but they're not the premier Ruckman. In the, he hasn't come up against a Max Gorn. He hasn't come up against a Brodie Grundy. Oh, can you imagine if he comes up against Grundy? He will well, absolutely kill him. He'll kill him. Well, I think so. So, 
I I know I know the kid tries hard. Hundred percent, and I I love his mode in that yeah. respect. I like that he's got a pretty like never say die attitude. Like I like hundred percent respect that. I just don't think that he is skillful enough, mobile enough, big enough. He seems to get pushed out of the contest a lot. He doesn't seem strong. Nah, he's just for me. He just does, and he can't kick. Yeah. What What else does he bring? Yeah. I know he's got good aerobic capacity, and that's all we keep hearing about. And a, but, and a little bit of mongrel. Yeah, and there's a bit of that, but like it doesn't translate enough into him having enough impact in the game, and that's the problem. Yep. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, yeah. do you you know that Source is going to be out for at least six? Yep. We're one and three. Mm-hmm. Do you give O'Brien this week and then go? Okay, we we're, we're going to give. Hunter a go. To use this period as an audition. Yeah, absolutely. Because short of, and there's there's talk about Grundy being given a godfather offer to come back next year. Yeah. But we all know how that goes. Mm. So we've got to deal with what we've got. And short of recruiting a ready-made first ruck next year, this is we're dealing with what we've got at the yeah, moment. 100%. Because you're not going to draft a kid who's going to come in and be no. number one ruck. We're going to have to trade. And that's if we're not going to get Lysette from last year, who would have been fucking perfect. Yeah. Um, we better go hard at Grundy or we better hope that Paul Hunter's up to it because otherwise we're yeah. fucked. Yeah. Well, I mean, the word was that we were up, we were into Peter Wright. Yeah. And, and he's then re-signed he re-signed. Now. Yep. So, I mean, the, the stocks are getting a bit thin. Mm. You know, we didn't even bother going after Zach Clark or anyone like yep. that. Who was on the market and went for nothing. Yeah. Yep. So... It's 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 strange by our club because Source is thirty. He's been injured for a while. Hasn't really been in a great form either. When he played, like even when he plays, I don't feel confident anymore. That's right. He was almost the first name on the paper every week when you're doing selection. Whereas yeah. now, I don't think it's like that. And now we've had a look at Riley, and all due respect to Riley, mm. I don't think he's up to it either. No. I don't even think he's up to it with a run of games. No, I, mean, I think. I think I don't see where he goes and progresses from here. That's right. I don't think it's anything to do with his effort or his comfortability at the end at that level or anything. Yeah. I just don't think he is physically up to it. Yeah, because when you looked at Grundy in his first couple of years, he was raw and he made a lot of mistakes. But you could see the potential, the, but you could see what he had. Yeah, I don't see what Riley's got. I, I feel like what you see from O'Brien is, is what, we're gonna what get. you're going to get. Yeah. So, and Hunter has been. Uh, handled strangely um, so and I actually think Hunter is the better footballer he may not be the better tack ruckman yeah, but we're not getting that anyway are we but he's the better footballer I think he offers us more, more around the ground potentially mm. and I, I'd I'd hate to think that the club is conservative enough to just go well Riley's our next up so he gets it six weeks And that's such an Adelaide thing to do it though, is it? it is but we need to see what Hunter can do I mm. think yeah, because I otherwise why re-rookie him why get him on the list well, he's probably just like, and playing devil's advocate to what your opinion is, it could just be a bit of insurance for the twos. Well, it could be, but here we are with Source out and Riley struggling. Mm. So, oh, yeah, well, I'm not saying it's the right decision, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. that could be the mentality. Oh, yeah. yeah, so mate, how do you see it all going? Like, oh. I'm, I'm a, on the surface, I'm thinking, well, Eddie's 300th, we really need a win playing at home. Gold Coast are an up-and-coming team, but they're really a bunch of workhorses. Uh, we should win. And yet, and yet, my worry is that everything that is good about Gold Coast is what's been bad about Adelaide. Mm. And that's what makes, makes me worry. And look, they haven't beaten us yet either. No. Let alone away from home. Um, I, you know, my tip last week was on the fence because I was genuinely scared about the game and I was right, as it turned yep. out. yeah. Um, I don't have the same feeling this week. Right. I think that just from everything that we've sort of heard through the media, through the players, you couple that with being Smith's 150th, Eddie's 300th, it would be fucking disgusting if we lost this game. It would be. It's at home. Eddie has been a massive part of our club since he left Carlton to come over. Yeah. You know, the dude has been phenomenal. He's got highlight reel for days. Well, he's moderate part two. Yeah, and then you've got Brody Smith who... Pretty much got robbed of playing in a, a final, a grand final for us. Who had an awesome year that year and has been a bit of a stalwart back there for us for a long time as well. Couple that with the fact that we've dropped a few, we've brought a couple of young blokes in, or a couple of the other ones like Greenwood who haven't played yeah. in a little bit. I think you add all that together, plus the fact that we're down and out and we should win this game and we're playing against Gold Coast who struggle against us. Yep. There is no reason why we lose this game. No, you're right. Mm. 
And yet I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just am. And I, and I get that I because it's am. probably just previous form, but I think that, and I was hoping a bit more of a kick up the ass with selection, but I think that from the from what I've heard coming out of the club, I'm satisfied that they're on top of it. I've heard a lot of things like going back to basics, playing like on instinct, all that sort of stuff, and I think that's what we've been missing on, and I'm hoping that translates into the game. What I've heard, and this is probably a Tuesday Night Live uh, subject, but I'll just put it out there for the people that haven't ever been watching. What I've heard is that, and remember I said a couple of weeks ago I felt like the boys were being overcoached. Mm. I've actually had a direct quote from someone mm. attached to the club who has said, the boys are being overcoached because there's four coaches in there trying to prove themselves. Yeah, right. And you think about it. You've got What's Marty Matner, point? Mick Godden, yeah. Ben Hart, and the other dickhead. Um, Which one? Who are we talking about? Uh, Clark. No, uh, I've forgotten. Um, Marty Matner, Ben Hart. Matthew, Matthew Clark, Gordon, oh, and, um, um, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. I can't remember his name. <laughs> anyway, you've that got, dickhead. Yeah, 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 that yeah, dickhead. Yeah, yeah. You've got blokes in there that are new or yeah. that are trying to cement a spot in, in the AFL coaching system. Yeah. They all want to have, be the guy with the idea. They all want to be the guy that comes up with a brand new plan and all the rest of it. You watch the way we're playing at the moment. We're confused. We're second guessing. I don't think we necessarily believe in the plan. And there's no cohesion, and that's a, no cohesion. That's the biggest thing. So, um, I honestly, I honestly think, and I've been banging on about this for a while, but I honestly think a lot of the problems that we're having at the moment stem from the coaching box. Yep. I think there's a disconnect. I think there's a, a, a lack of communication. I think there's a lack of co- cohesion between the coaches, which means that it's translating onto the field. So hopefully the coaches can get out of the player's way well, that's what and I've, let them play. I don't know if you've seen, but even like, and I wanted to absolutely punch Pike's head in after the game because I was blaming him. But then I don't know if you watched his press conference after and it was very much, he was feeling it as much as what yeah. everyone else was. Yeah. And that made me pleased because like, all right, you actually care. You're not just giving us the same shit you do yeah. every week. Yeah. I've also heard him come out and say that they've just got to get back to basics. They've just got to let the boys play. Yeah. And it's like, thank God, please just unleash them. Just let them do what they're doing. Yeah. Let them play that fast footy, link up handball, whatever. Just let them play yeah. footy. They're good enough to figure it out for themselves. We're playing Gold Coast. Let them get their confidence back because it's their confidence is on the floor at the moment. Yeah. And, and we that, have... That's, Sorry, the, no. that's the biggest problem as well because if they sort their stuff out in the coach's box, it might be too late because they might have cooked the players' heading. Well, we've got three games now against teams. I mean, you could have probably put North Melbourne in that mix, uh-huh. but we've got games that we should be able to win. Yeah. And I hope that the coaches take this opportunity to step back and let the team play the way that they were drafted or picked to play. Yeah. Instinctful yeah. footy. Everyone knows that's ever played any sort of sport that you're always at your best when you're not thinking about it. Yeah. And yes, there's game plan, there's structure, and I get all that. But whenever you are playing well, it's instinctful. You don't have to think about what you're doing. You're acting on instinct, yeah. and you play so much better that way. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, so look, let's, let's hope. Um, it'll be very interesting to see uh, the player's attitude, the player's willingness to work. Uh, the way our forward line uh, operates mm-hmm. with the change in structure mm-hmm. and whether we get found out down back. I'm hoping it's not going to be an issue, but I think we'll win by six goals. At six least, goals at, is your tip? At, at least. Gold Coast are paying $51 for a 41-plus win. That's good money. That is good money. You can almost put it on there. $51. Just, just to get the karma back on your side. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, well, you can't win money and have your team win. It's like, well, good. Make sure my team wins. I don't want the money. Look, you know what? For me, even Adelaide Oval at the moment isn't the isn't the kicker because we've, we've lost there. Yeah, but you've got to remember, these guys haven't beaten us yet. That's a big mental hurdle. No, but it's also, every time they don't beat us, it's one step closer to them beating us. Well, that just depends on whether you're a glass half full or glass half oh, empty. It's a realist. No, because... glass half empty is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm going to do a 
Don Pike and back the boys in. Oh, you're going to back the boys in? I'm going to back the boys in. Back the boys in. (laughs) (laughs) One more week for Eddie's 300th. Just got to do it. Um, A little bit of uh, excitement injected into the team with Greenwood and and, uh, the Berg coming in. Yep. I'm, I'm one foot off, but I'm... Oh, make, make a tip. Put your balls on the line. Yeah, Do three it. goals. Oh, you're soft. What, what, how, I don't know you've who's going to win, so I'll pick a draw. No, That's been, you last week. No, no, because you've been saying the whole cast that Gold Coast are going to beat us, and then you go, no, no we'll win by three goals. No, no look, if we don't you work, if we don't work, <laughs> if we don't work hard, we will lose. Let's... But, I'm, but what I'm banking on is that because it's some bloke's 300th game mm. and we're playing at Some home. blokes? He's not just some bloke. Exactly. He's right. the bloke. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm. We're playing at home, 53,000, Eddie's 300th. We're playing like shit, a bit of media backlash, blah, 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 all that shit. If they've got any sort of spine whatsoever, they're going to respond. But I don't think Gold Coast is going to make it easy for us and I don't think we're yet in any sort of form to confidently say a six or seven goal win. So I'm going three. Soft ass, mate. All right, guys. Well, that's it for us. Uh, we hope you're nice and revved up for the game uh, this afternoon. <laughs> we are, god damn it. Yeah, I'll punch you right in the face. <laughs> uh, don't forget, uh, the Sunday wrap's going to be a little bit later because of the late finish uh, to this game. So join us at 8 o'clock on Sunday night for the wrap show with me, Nikki, and Macca, hopefully discussing a three goal win. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, thanks to everyone who supports us, obviously through Patreon and other channels. Don't forget you can subscribe to this on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, visit our website, aflcrowcast.com. See you, mate. <laughs> I don't think you put that to air, Ken. Yeah. All right. We'll see you later, guys. See you.